that one down there, that's a water buffalo. A- Asianic water buffalo. Which picture? So down here to the right, go right. Bottom right? right. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, like the ones we have. Dude, that's a big fucking Oh, they are. You can catch them. Beast. I, was, I was telling Forrest how to catch them. You were going to eat one? Uh, well, I, I, I took down three when I was there. What? Yeah. The shit thing was I only had a, a small knife, a K-bar, and I had like a four-inch blade. So that was, yeah. So when I tied them up and brought them down and then um, I had to kill it with that knife, that was... Um, how did you do that? It's... Okay, I can yeah, I can explain it. It's quite graphic. I just want to let people know that when you are in a situation, a survival situation, um, yes, keep your morals about you. Yes, keep your ethics about you. But the only way to survive is you need to be a savage. The same Publix, the same fucking. You're not shopping at the grocery store. You're literally life or death. You have to be. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you become a savage. Yeah. Okay, but you know, yes, you. Try and keep your morals and ethics about you. Mm-hmm. How I had to kill him? Uh, you bring him down to the ground, tie him up so he can't move. So, when, first of all, when you spotted him, where was he? What do you mean? He's on land. What, what do you so, mean? so he wasn't in the water. He was because usually they're in the water. So, yeah. So normally they do hang around with water. Uh, uh-huh. The water buffalo, and you can find it in around the billabongs, um, particularly in the. Um, uh, the in the early mornings and later in the afternoons. That's when I'll come to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but uh, during the day, you'll just see him out in the floodplain. So you just see him out the... walking, okay. and then you, you pick your you pick your match. You know, generally you're going for an older bull, like an older male bull. Right, right, right. Um, and um, yeah, you stick to him. You make that commitment. You just keep going for him. So I had a lasso, so I'd run him. So persistence hunting. So I'm running behind, running behind, running behind. And um, we're talking. Are, you, are, you, are we talking sprinting or are we jogging? Uh, or how fast? So, I'm not talking David Radish 800 meter sprint. You know, you saying mean? bolt? Oh, you saying bolt? No, no. You you keep an average speed on him. You keep pressure on him. You okay. Know? And those older bulls, yeah, they, they they'll run for a good distance, but I normally just keep behind them. What you want is you want that animal to turn back on you. Any animal that turns back on you, I said, oh, now you're laughing because that animal's made a decision that it's went from flight into fight. Right. And now it's like, oh, okay, well now it's mano y mano. Um, so what I would do is I'd run with these animals uh, and then I would get a lasso around him and then I'd run with him with the lasso. Now, you're talking about a one-ton animal. The only right. way to hold up a one-ton animal is what I would do is as I was chasing behind him, he would go to one side of the tree. Like imagine um, as I'm running, you need to pick your trees good too uh, because your tree's going to be your anchor point. So you've got about 25 okay. metres of rope. You're running with this buffalo and all of a sudden you see a tree up ahead and you chase him in such a way that he goes to the left or to the right, either way. But in that point, you put the sprint on him so you're right up his back end because what you're now going to time is as soon as he goes past that tree, you've got to run. Boom. It's like you're fucking sliding. You know, with the baseball how they do their slides, you've got to slide and get one rope in to anchor. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So as he goes down one side of the tree, you go the other and you get that first anchor in. Now, mate, that can be very dangerous because you can lose your hands very fast. Your hands get caught up in that rope. I oh, said, yeah. he'll, he'll, pull, he'll pull your fucking arms out. Um, get him anchored. Once he's anchored and you tie that off, then it's about him going into fight mode. So he's there, he's, he's fighting this lasso, and then all of a sudden you walk towards him. And they're smart. They're a smart animal, very calculated. Um, I get him to charge me, but as I'm getting him to charge me, I just keep running around the tree. So what I'm doing is I'm just lowering the um, the rope, you know what I mean? Like I'm, wow. I'm listening and getting to a point where he almost wraps himself around the tree. Then I get a back leg, right? Another bit of rope, back leg. And then I essentially just um, use his motion against him to get that back leg up. As soon as I get that back leg up, he'll roll, he'll tip. And then you've got to be fast because then you've got to get in there and you've got to tie their back legs up. So animals now on the ground, back legs are tied. Um, you've got to be careful because they can still move their horns and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you're trying to um, essentially get him entangled. At that point in time, um, you know, you've definitely got to have your connection with your animal. And I, you know, I talk to him, I tell him everything's going to be okay, everything's going to be fine. Um, take your shirt off, wrap it around his eyes, and then I would, um, because the skin of a buffalo is so thick and I've only got a four-inch blade, what I'd have to do is I would literally cut. Oh, it's gonna sound real fucked up. I'd have to cut almost like a patch, like dunk, 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 cut a patch, right? Pull the skin and then get the blade in, and then literally try and get my hands inside so then I can start cutting. Because trying to get to the uh, your artery, it's actually quite deep. Wow. Yeah. You have to get like fist deep in there just to get to the artery. 
Holy so, shit, bro. Yeah, so it's pretty, um, like I said, um, it can be a, yeah, a pretty deep sort of thing going on there. But look, oh, I can't fucking even imagine, dude. I think did you did you just figure this out, or did you did you sort of know or understand or talk to people who have caught water buffalo before? Nobody catches them like that. People do it in the in the. You just made this up as you were going. Yeah, you, well, that's, you, well, that's you what just, I've done. That's I I, I I go and I catch animals. I figure out different ways of doing it, different methodologies of doing it. And you just yeah, just I, I, I love it. And actually, the, the catching water buffaloes is probably the one thing I actually enjoy doing in the Northern Territory because it represents the biggest danger and the biggest challenge. Oh, but I love it, man. I really I, I get kicks for it. I love it. You are a fucking savage. But I don't kill. No, I, just, I don't kill them. You know, I'll catch and release and all that kind of stuff. But right, right, right. When I was doing this trek, I was catching the. Of course, I was catching the kill. Yeah. Um, that is so intense. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, see, I've never really opened up, talked about this too much because this would make a lot of people feel uncomfortable, and they'd probably look at me different and be like, "Man, this guy's real fucked up." I don't think so. But no, I think the respect that I have and what I've had to do, I think people would be very surprised, and I think there's got to be a lot of discipline. Mm. There's got to be a lot of discipline, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in what I do, and I think, you know, um, your connection with the animal you know you, you, the welfare of the animal and all that kind of stuff that needs to play a big part in it you know someone that's um not of that mind space you know they've yeah they, yeah they're, they're a bit different i think there's a lot that goes through my mind when i'm doing that consciously um yeah man you're doing it with your bare hands and a rope and a four inch blade i mean it doesn't get any more intimate than that no um, there's one thing I'll say, and this is important. I think this, it's probably worthwhile I say this. Um, um, there's that old quote that I was getting to mm. is, it actually starts off as there's a boy and a horse and they're in the forest. And, um, the boy says to the horse, the boy says to the horse, I can't see a way through and the horse says to the boy, can you see your next step? And the boy says, yes. And then the horse replies, well, then just take that. And I think that's a huge analogy out there. I think for anyone that's listening, if you find yourself in life where you're in a situation, you don't know what to do and all that kind of stuff, as long as you just keep moving forwards, 100%. that is the way to go about it. And things can look dark and, and deep and, and bad. And I've definitely faced that when I've been out in the bush and I've done expeditions and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But as long as you keep pushing forward and you keep positive, oh, mate, I was prepared to fucking crawl out of there. I was prepared to finish that thing by fucking crawling, 100%. You know, and I think everyone that has a deep motivation inside of them, and I dare say probably 99% of people on this earth never really get to tap into that deepest part of their motivation, right. that survival motivation. You know, and that's that stays with you because I can still remember. I can still remember the mindset. I can still remember every single animal's eyes that I've you know, wow. I've had to look into to kill. You know, you 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 collect all that. You collect all that information. You know, you never lose that. You 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 hold on to that. 